Hello everyone, welcome back to Mixbus TV. David here, hope you're having a great day. So many of you asked for part two, so here we go. Tape plugins shootout part two. Today we test another bunch of promising tape emulation. Here we go. In the first part, we tested a good bunch of tape emulation plugins against my Neve 542's tape emulators hardware. I won't do the whole introduction again, I want to get to this test quickly, but I will use the same audio files that I used in the previous video, so you guys can have a reference across both videos. If you guys are watching this video first, haven't seen the first one, and want to hear the hardware in action, so to compare it to the new batch of plugins, please watch part one. Let's get started. As you can see from my screen, even this time there are so many they don't fit my screen, but we have some really nice gems in here. Let's start. We are gonna test Hornet Tape, FabFilter Saturn, which is a saturator, but it has two tape modes, clean and warm. Then you requested it, so I got it. Air Windows to Tape 5 that I'm using through Blue Cat Patchwork. Real Bus from Tone Booster. This used to be one of my favorites. And then we will also test, because you asked, the T-Rex Saturator, which again has Tape 1 and Tape 2 modes. And then again, by popular demand, Satin from UE. And then the biggest GUI probably that I've ever seen, Black Rooster Audio Magnetite. And one that you never see tested, Phoenix 2 Tape Emulation from That Genius of Dave Hill. And just for shits and giggles, we'll also test something that I use all the time, which is Pro Tools Heat, which is built in into Pro Tools and designed by Dave Hill as well. Let's start with the first. Let's start with the first one, Tone Booster Real Bus 4. This used to be one of my favorites. We start with the default setting, 15 IPS, and let's see how it performs. That's very interesting, very different from the previous version I was used to. Uh, we have a drive with uh, basically semi-parametric EQ there to tailor the saturation curve. It's fairly clean overall. Uh, keep in mind that this is the first time I tried this version, uh, but it has a nice behavior, a nice action in the compression slider when we adjust the compression curve. And it's definitely very interesting, this drive curve that you can adjust. It works if you hear kind of backwards, kind of counterintuitive. There's more high end when you cut than when you boost, because of course there's more high end pushed into the tape. Definitely uh, each uh, type, V2, 3, 4, and Ferox have a different uh, frequency response. If I don't remember wrong, even in the, in the previous version, we had different type of machines. I remember the old version being a little more diverse when you change the type of machine. Again, it's fairly clean, unless you really drive it hard to distortion, which is a good thing, um, especially if you want to use it on multiple tracks on or the two bus. I don't feel the low bump, the low end glue that I hear with other, that I hear with my knee first and other um, plugins that we tested. Let me try it on the other material that we used in the previous video. Thank you. 
yeah, the saturation is definitely nice. Uh, fuzzy and warm if you want more than aggressive, like we heard on, on other plugins. I also see it has flanger, echoes, and device, which is probably the start-stop start uh, tape effect. It's nice. I remember using the old real bus for a specific trick, which was rolling off the high end on electric guitars. That worked uh, really, really well. Maybe I'm sure this one does the same. It's just a matter of settings. Um, the speed changes the tone, uh, not that much as other plugins, but the saturation on this one is, is really, is definitely nice. I can see real bus uh, more of use on groups and single tracks actually than two bus, but again, this is the very first time that I try it. I still like it. Let's get to the second one, which is probably one of the most requested UE satin tape machine. This one is really deep. Input and output controls aside, we have vintage and modern tape and a bunch of controls here at the bottom for tape, repro heads, different circuits and encoder and decoder. Let's play audio through it because I'm not going to do a full review of the plugin itself. Wow, I'm noticing one thing right off the bat. This one seems to be really good at shaving off the transients. If we look at the meter without it, we are... at a peak level of 5.7 with it. A good 6.9, probably even more when the snare hits, so we gained more than 1 dB. Default settings, just pushing the input uh, a little harder, just right in the red. I really like this one, it is a very organic sound, very nice bottom end. Again, I will try to change encoder and decoder and the circuit to see what we can, what we can get out of. But so far, I really like, it's pretty impressive. Wow, the combinations of the encoder, decoder, and the circuit really, really changed the sound. Um, so far, it seems one of the most versatile. And I really like the low end. Again, close to my knee. One of the closest, actually. Very nice, I really like this EAS30 IPS. Definitely good sound. We can change speed and pre-emphasis. Let's try on the other material to change that. So very nice. The gap width actually changes the frequency response again, and we have a, a control for the bump. So this one with a little work would probably be the closest I can get to my knees.
very impressed with this. Uh, granted that it has a lot of controls and needs experimentation, but this has a really, really nice legit saturation. And I love how the pre-emphasis uh, changes the, the tone in the high end and the, the, the saturation in the high end. Really, really nice. I will definitely want to experiment a little more with this one with all these controls, but do I see it so far? Uh, suited for two bus definitely I also see it has different modes delay and flanger which is great I love uh, real tape delays you know uh, I'll definitely work with this one a little more but, but so far hardens up for the UE satin tape machine this is the first time that I try not just to tape 5 but any plugin from air windows and I've always heard great things about them so I'm really curious to try let's play some audio through it let's start with default settings Wow, <laughs> this one is really, really nice. I mean, just playing with this a little bit, the three controls that I touched, louder, softer, and fatter, they sound great. The overall saturation is, again, uh, very nice. Again, plugins got really good at it. There's no deny it. So the saturation is appears to be a combination of saturation and compression. It works really well. I love how it brings up detail. I love how it brings up the low-end information up. Uh, on top of like compressing it. The soft turn up is again pretty nice. While I was turning it, I didn't have the impression that the high end was going away. I, I felt the high end coming back when I put, put it back to zero. So this is nice. This tells me is very transparent, very gentle, very smooth. I can see while working on vocals, SC vocals, electric guitars, there are two brush synths. I'm really impressed with this one. Wow, I would, I would love to experiment with this one on a different kind of sounds and different material. Maybe, maybe in another video. Let's try it on the other material that we used for this test. Okay, one thing that I'm noticing on this material, if you pay attention, it tends to accentuate a, a part of the mid-range that for this specific material is not fitting well. But again, this is the reason why we have so many plugins and different ones, different of the same, because not everyone works with everything. I don't know if this specific curve that I'm hearing depends on how high the louder knob is. Let me try to pull it back but also that seems the overall effect so by pulling it back it's probably going to be a lot more transparent and less obvious No, I think it's more the tone of this specific plugin. Uh, not that I don't like it either. I mean, I was really impressed on the other material. How close is to Maniv? It's not comparable. Uh, too different. The saturation is more soft, round, again, 
compared to the more aggressive and also more natural uh, saturation of the neves doesn't have anything to enhance the high end but is not meant to nonetheless uh, this is a really nice plugin again to tape five air windows hats off and of course you guys i was using this one with blue cat patchwork because it's bst only let's get to the next one which is not really a tape emulation is a saturator fab filter saturn but you guys asked because this one has also two types of tape the clean tape mode and the warm tape mode i'm familiar with this plugin um i'm not gonna say anything before trying it so let's just play audio through it Okay, like I said, I know this plugin and I love it. By the way, it's one of my favorite saturator. Yes, the video on my top 10 saturator is coming. Um, the one thing that I've always thought about this plugin is the clean tape and the warm tape are kind of deceiving names because you can, to me, like it, the clean tape has a pretty obvious roll off in the high end and the warm tape, because it has a more rich saturation, to me always, I don't want to say it, but it sounds more clean than the clean tape. Um, probably because it's like the in enrichment in harmonics. To me, it sounds more like what, what I expect from an, a tape enhancement. Between the two algorithms, I usually tend to prefer warm tape, but at the same time, the warm tape has a very obvious low end bump and I'm not talking about uh, touching EQ, tone, or anything else. I will touch the dynamics because this is a really nice control on this plugin, but by default, just turning the drive knob. It has a, usually a too pronounced low end bump and too wide, as in the bell is a bit too wide and he, and he ends in that low mid area, which is, which I usually don't like on many instruments, especially on the two bus. I did use Saturn as a two bus processor, but as a saturator, not as a tape emulation. And I usually like the clean tube mode. This is also multiband, so it's a whole different uh, ball game. But again, between the two, uh, clean tape and warm tape, the warm tape to me sounds richer. It also has a less pronounced uh, compression effect than the clean tape, probably even because we are missing that uh, high end. So everything that sounds darker also sounds a bit more compressed to our ears. Uh, which doesn't mean it does not have uh, other uses, but let's keep playing with it. Now for this track in particular, the low end bump on the warm tape kind of seems to fit well. Might need a little bit of EQ in that low mid area uh, range, but it works well. Um, it also had the old tape mode, but I'm not even including that in this, in this test because that's an obvious effect. Even a lowest settings is just a filter basically with distortion. The one thing that I find uh, a bit strange on the Saturn is the gain staging. Um, it tend to basically saturate right away. It doesn't have that much headroom, meaning obviously you can gain headroom by uh, driving the signal into it a little lower. But again, when you turn the drive knob, it goes from zero to 20 pretty, pretty fast.
again, um, you saw me playing with the dynamics because especially when you increase the dynamics, the saturation, it, it, it changes, obviously because it changes the sustain and everything. Saturn is an amazing, amazing saturator. Like I said, one of my favorites. The tape modes, to me, don't really sound like tape. Uh, is a different kind of effect. It has its uses in a mix. Like I said, I do use them uh, often. It just, it doesn't, it doesn't really sound like satin UE that we just tried or the bit skills that we tried in the other video. It's not exactly what I expect to hear when I think tape emulation, especially for a master tape. Uh, again, nonetheless, great plugin, Saturn from FabFilter. Next one is another curveball. You asked for it, and again, because I included Saturn, it was fair to include this one, T-Rex Saturator, which is again another saturator, but it has tape one and tape two algorithms. So let's try this one. I'm not familiar with this one. I tried it a couple of times briefly, so let's try it. First try sounds kind of weird for being tape. Levels are good going in uh, about plus two. Tape one mode it doesn't strike me as having the same nice saturation that some of the others um, plugins have like Satin or Tape from Softube that we tried in the first video. This was my very first impression though uh, at the first few seconds. Let's keep going. I hear a little bump in a too high of an area for being that glue at the bottom end that I really like with tape emulation in general. This one seems to be, feels like is more, I don't know, 120 going up in the 200 range. Let's try tape number two. Definitely a richer collection of harmonics, also more compression, for sure, and it kind of splattered the material. Again, I'm not feeling that analog-like saturation. This one feels more like a plugin, more like a processed sound. I'm losing a little bit of punch and the kick drum is smearing a little bit, so let's try it on the other material. Can he have uses in a mix? Sure, uh, not as a master tape, uh, maybe a special effect for single tracks. But again, this is a saturator, so it has probably its strong points in the uh, master mode, push pull, class A, iron and steel. I'm, I'm sure it sounds uh, great, but I will try that in, in another occasion. This is about tapes. I'm not impressed with this one. Number six is tape by Hornet plugins. This was also one of the most requested. It's fairly simple, which I like already. Uh, we got input and output out again. This is nice. So it sets the level, the right level going in. That's already nice. Out comp his bias and a bunch of tape machines. And I see very familiar names. So I'm pretty sure I'm gonna like this one. Let's play some audio through it.
very nice, <laughs> extremely nice. Two things that I like. Uh, I'm very familiar with the models they modeled and they sound legit. Uh, it reminds me a lot of one of my favorites of the Mac DSP analog channel. Um, I like the low end on this one, which you know is something I just don't find in any plugins compared to my Neves. But this one sounds really nice. I like the curves. As for the Mac DSP, and we will keep going with the machines, I feel like this is a great way to assess where your low end is in your mix by changing these type of machines because they have a preset curves of cut and boost, push and pull in the low end that tells you a lot about your low end. Let's keep going. By the way, I like a Swiss uh, 15 IPS right away. The low end is really nice. Love the punch on the 30 IPS. Sorry, let's keep going. I love this one, <laughs> it's really nice. The bias, again, simple, three controls, zero plus three plus six, and you adjust the high end, you pick one of the machines, they all sound great. Nice glue effect, it doesn't distort in a bad way, not even when you push it like obviously too much. Uh, the saturation is very different from, for example, uh, soft tube tape, or even the beat skill, or the satin. Um, I don't know, I don't know how to describe this one probably is just the collection of harmonics is different. It feels a little less aggressive, but rich nonetheless, and more transparent, although it has a specific kind of curve because of the different machines. Let's try it on the other material. Wow, really nice. And you hear that the bump is obviously for each machine, each center, the corner frequency is centered on a different, uh, obviously, frequency. And this one catches the kick drum, which in this case is a little higher, uh, very well. And I like how if you run it clean, like you don't hit the red, you stay conservative with the level going in, it opens up. So it doesn't have that much compression, that much. Uh, natural tape compression but still compression i don't know what to add this one is pretty straightforward few controls either works or doesn't do i see it as a two bus processor yes absolutely how close is to my Neves? is not really comparable they are fairly different this one arguably has more uh control and option on the low end my Neves have just you know 30 ips and 15 ips but we are talking high-end plugins nonetheless so definitely horns up for the hornet tape Number seven, the biggest GUI I've ever seen. <laughs> Jesus, uh, Black Rooster Audio Magnetite. I did not know about this one. One of you subscribers made me aware of it in the comments, so I'm testing this one for the first time. I can see Bakelite uh, like knobs, which I like. Pretty big uh, GUI. I know you can, yeah, okay. So you can somewhat resize it, which is nice because it takes a lot of real estate but let's play audio through it. I like it. It starts with a very obvious wow and flutter, which throw me off. 
uh, we should probably default this one at zero because it has a very obvious flanging effect that didn't get what it was at first. Again, from the first seconds on this material, doesn't seem to have the same uh, kind of analog-like saturation effects that we find on uh, some other plugins and definitely on the Neve. It feels more enrichment in the mid area, which can be tricky depending on the material. I don't hear a low bump. Um, I hear the bias changes quite a bit, the high end. With the red tape, what I'm hearing is a little more punch, but I also lose a little bit of low end. Same for the blue. The black appears to be the more transparent to me. Um, let me see levels. Yeah, the type of compression really, when you push it, really changes between blue, uh, black, and red. Um, black seems to have the more rounding of the transient. Blue seems to be a little more open. And again, red is somewhere in between, for at least on this material. Let me try 7.5. I would expect more change um, between the two, but it, it's, it's no harm. I mean, uh, I don't know. It, it doesn't have that, again, that um, kind of saturation that I find in some other plugins. I don't know about this one. Let me try it on some other material before saying anything. <music> Is overall a pretty subtle effect. It doesn't have much in between uh, the first stage of saturation and when it gets too much. I would love to see uh, a ganked control for rec level and peak level or an output uh, compensation, auto compensation. I don't know about this one. I'm not wowed by it. Um, it's not bad by any means, but this is also the first time I try it, so I might. Uh, need to experiment with it uh, a little bit more, but this was my first impression. Here we are at the last one. You probably have never seen this plugin tested by anyone. This is Phoenix 2 by Dave Hill. If you don't know who the man is, is the designer for Crane Song Hardware, one of the most amazing sounding uh, hardware uh, manufacturer out there manufacturer of the tracker compressors, the Titan now, the STC-8 mastering compressor, and the IBIS mastering EQ. He's also the one who designed HEAT, which we are gonna test after this quickly, which is the saturation system built in into Pro Tools. But he also has Phoenix 2 tape emulation. This plugin is great. Interface is not one of the best. If you know Dave Hill, and I actually know him personally, you know that's all normal, but this plugin actually sounds amazing. Let's play some audio through it.
So you see, I already got lost in the sound of Phoenix 2 because I'm biased. I like this one. I don't even want to talk. I just want to, you know, hear it in action. Uh, how to describe it? You heard it. So it doesn't have the low bump. It has on some type, but it's not that obvious like the Neve or other tape emulation. This is more like a, a different kind of collection of harmonics depending on the type. The brightness just got three settings. Sapphire is the brightest and gold is in the middle and opal is the more uh, dark of the of the three. Um, has more high end roll off. You can input trim and output trim to compensate. As soon as you start, you need to compensate because the harmonics uh, do make the material louder. And of course, you can adjust the process. This one has no metering, no anything. So literally, you have to just use your ears. And I think this is one of the reasons on top of the GUI uh, as to why people don't really use this one so much. You don't see it uh, so often because literally has no reference visual anything other than your ears. It doesn't show you what frequency curve has each type. It doesn't tell you input and output metering, nothing. So you just, you know, you either know what you're doing or this is kind of tricky. But the quality of the saturation of this plugin it's absolutely great. Is more all the types are more concentrated on the money range, so mid range, wide mid range, and top end more than low end. But again, that's the money. That's the money range. So on this material, I don't even know what to say. Like which one is the best? Uh, there are some of the types are obviously changing the frequency response a lot. So you might not want to use those on the two bus. But uh, there are so many. Uh, types that they're all suitable for for two bus if you mix into them from the get-go and also one thing that um, I like about this one is when you mix into it like usually when you mix you tend to raise level of things as the mix pr proceeds and either you adjust the trim but I find adjusting the process instead when you start hitting the plugins too hard and you started mixing into it from the beginning it's best but what can I say? Um, let me play a little bit more with this one. It's crazy because even if you try to uh, match the level, the nominal level, it sounds just so much, you know, louder. <laughs> and it's just a matter of uh, content, harmonic content. So a Phoenix Two, like I said, I don't, I don't want to say, it, I want to repeat it again. <laughs> I really like this one. Uh, let me try it really quick on the other material just to give you an idea. Here, for example, how the Radiant uh, type has more compression than the other, given the same levels. The Iridescence uh, has this nice, shiny top end, which can work. It actually works great on vocals. That's another little secret about this one. It works great on single tracks. Dark Essence is the one that has uh, that little uh, color warmth in the low end. Uh, on this material, it doesn't fit particularly well because again, it's a little higher. It's not like subby, but um, the Luminescence, the first one is like just a better makeup.
it's crazy it just brings things to life like it has a collection of everything we like like punch and color and just richness i'm not gonna i'm not gonna go on uh more on this one crane song phoenix 2 stay tuned because on the top 10 saturator video that is gonna come out soon there will be another one from dave hill this would be the last one but as we said i just want to try it really quick the heat which is also designed by Dave Hill. So as you see, I activated this one and down here I can show it to you guys. It appears here on top of each track, okay? So this one, when you open it, it opens one, uh, basically one instance of heat, which is a saturator on each audio track, okay? Not on effects, not on auxes, not on subgroups. So it's a cumulative effect. And here is again why I insist so much in correct gain staging because you will not be able to use this one if you don't know what you do with gain staging so uh, you cannot adjust uh, each individual track drive or tone which are the master controls here that you see on the right so you can only adjust it here so each track uh, the level the distortion the saturation and all that depends on how hard your audio is hitting that track Again, if you don't have uh, correct gain staging, you just cannot use this one because <laughs> things are gonna crap out or just not get you know any processing at all. So all these yellow tracks here are our piece of music. You see at the top, it will start to light up this bar according to how hard the audio is hidden, according to how much saturation is gonna be applied. Now, the drive knob, if we go on the left side, is more like tape saturation, and on the, on the right side, more like tube saturation. And the tone just adjusts the overall frequency curve. Heat is a very transparent, very organic kind of saturation. Again, designed by Dave Hill. I love it, I use it on most of my mixes. Um, as a main uh, track saturator. So let's just hear it in action. I'm not gonna say anything, you heard it. Uh, the saturation of this one is really, really nice. To me, it's just kind of a different level. I don't know why, well, David Hill designed it, I know why. I usually like, especially on EDM material, electronic music more on the left side, so the tube side, and maybe compensated with a tone one click on the right, which is brighter, uh, just because the drive on the left side it has more saturation on the low end, on the mid-low range, which I really like. It sounds really nice and it's hard to find saturator in general, not just tape emulators, that sounds good when saturating that range. So the Neves do it, Heat does it. Um, on some material, again, you need to gain stage your tracks correctly. So let me try it on the other material that we have. Thank you. 
okay? So as you can see, you can also bypass uh, uh, your individual tracks. You cannot adjust drive and tone, but you can bypass and decide if pre or post. This is about it, uh, Heat, designed by Dave Hill. Um, probably people who don't have Pro Tools will be pretty surprised about this one. But yeah, it's definitely, definitely a great uh, processing for saturation. And this was Tape Plugins Shootout Part 2. In Part 1, if you want to watch it, you can hear the hardware in action. Link is going to be below. I hope this video was useful. I hope you like it. And I also hope there are not another 10 tape plugins out there that I'm not aware of because two videos is enough. Anyway, if you liked the video, please don't forget to leave a like. If you have any questions, leave it in the comment. All the links to the plugins we've seen today are going to be in the info box down below, along with my new premium mixing courses and stuff. Follow Mixbus TV on Facebook and Instagram for exclusive content, pictures, updates, my latest mixes. Thank you for watching. Subscribe if you haven't already. See you next time.